Paul Tripp's Identity Crisis. Paul Tripp says the number one issue facing the church in this decade is identity. I think that the number one issue is identity. I think the further we get away from a biblical worldview, the further we get away from these wonderful categories that God has given us that help us make sense of who we are and who we are in relationship to one another, who we are, gender, sex. Tripp is saying that God has given his people the wonderful category of identity to help believers understand who they are. And then what you have is you have this horrible loss of those categories and and then people grabbing for categories. I think it's one of the reasons why we have all the tribalism that we have now because being part of a tribe gives me identity. Mm-hmm. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is the meaning of my life. Tripp again emphasizes the importance of identity. And one of the ways we make sense out of our lives is by assigning to ourselves identity. Now, there are only two places to look for identity. You look for it vertically or you look for it horizontally. One of the beauties of new life in Christ is Christ is our identity. We get our identity, our sense of meaning and purpose, our deepest sense of inner well-being from him. The purpose of this video is to examine Paul Tripp's teaching on identity in the light of biblical truth. Paul David Tripp is a biblical counselor, an award-winning author, an international conference speaker, and the president of Paul Tripp Ministries. He received a Master of Divinity degree from the Reformed Episcopal Seminary and a Doctorate of Ministry in Biblical Counseling at Westminster Theological Seminary. He was a faculty member at the Christian Counseling and Education Foundation for many years. Tripp's article, published by the Gospel Coalition, explains how he became involved in the Biblical Counseling movement. In 1987, I was called to be a faculty member at CCEF, and a lecturer at Westminster. David Paulison and I shared a heart for the gospel, for the church, and for street-level application of scripture to everyday life. David and I spent hours and hours together trying to construct a theology of the heart and how the gospel works change. As we got a greater sense of what God had called us to in the field of personal pastoral counseling ministry, we knew we needed to train others. Since the church wasn't coming to Philadelphia, we would need to go to the church. So David and I traveled to churches all around the United States. Trips Search for Identity In his weekly devotional, Paul Tripp describes his search for identity with these words. I've searched for identity in my successes, but failures get in the way. I've looked for identity in my possessions, but they age, break and malfunction. I've sought identity in people, but everyone is flawed somehow. I've searched for identity in ministry, but the spirit gets in the way. So I've quit looking out and begun looking up. Trip goes on. I don't think that we talk about this enough. I don't think we celebrate this reality enough. I don't think we let our hearts consider the wonder of this identity enough. It is far better than any too-good-to-be-true story. So since this is true, why would you search for identity anywhere else? From where does Tripp get his obsession with identity? Is identity a biblical concept? The answer is no. The most general and broad concept of identity 
has been proposed by Eric Erikson, a psychologist of the 20th century, who has been described as probably the most significant post-Freudian thinker with a unique and profound vision. Erikson described identity as a fundamental organizing principle which develops constantly throughout the lifespan. He constructed a model that centered on psychosocial development rather than psychosexual development as Freud had done. While Erikson accepted many of the central tenets of Freudian theory, he believed the environment in which a child lived was crucial to providing psychological growth and identity. Erikson's psychological theories expanded upon Sigmund Freud's original five stages of development. Indeed, his study of the life cycle led him to believe that each person progressed through eight stages of development. Erikson is one of the most cited psychologists of the 20th century. He believed identity is an important element of what makes us who we are. Identity refers to the way people think of themselves, that which gives a person meaning and purpose and elevates their self-esteem becomes their identity. Each person seeks and develops their own identity, a subjective phenomenon that is focused on a person's self-centered needs. The desire to achieve an integrated identity was seen as a positive force for mental psychological development. Failure to achieve an integrated identity could lead to mental illness. Erikson believed that the formation of identity was one of the most important conflicts people face and famously coined the phrase identity crisis. A developmental event that involves a person's questioning their sense of self in the world. An identity crisis is a time of intensive exploration of different ways of looking at oneself. The psychological theory of identity insists that everyone has a compelling need for a satisfactory identity which produces feelings of security, significance and self-worth. As with most popular psychological theories, this view has invaded the Christian counselling movement. Yet it is not difficult to see that this way of thinking is hostile to the Christian faith. Erikson's psychological theory of identity is the philosophical foundation of Tripp's address to the Liberate Conference. We learn much about Paul Tripp from his address to the third annual Liberate Conference held in Florida in 2014. Tripp's topic was God's one-way love and personal identity. Well, there is a plague that has infected the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a sad disease. It's left us weakened and broken and discouraged and afraid. It's almost no sooner than you come to faith in Jesus Christ than you get infected. Tripp asserts that most people who come to faith in Christ are soon infected with a serious spiritual disease. He makes this assertion without any reference to scripture. He has set himself up as a Gnostic prophet with special knowledge of divine things, and we are expected to simply accept his assertion. And it robs you of your spiritual vitality. It robs you of your joy. It robs you of the rest that Jesus died that you would have. 
it somehow, some way gets us all. It's a communicable disease that is ravaging the church of Jesus Christ. With his special knowledge, Tripp claims to know that identity amnesia is widespread in the church. The problem is most people that have it don't know they have it. They actually live with the delusion that they're healthy and they're okay when everything in their life points to the fact that they're sick. In other words, Christian believers are so lacking in spiritual discernment that they don't even know that they are suffering with a serious spiritual disease. It's a terrible disease. It's one that needs to be eradicated. What is it, you ask? It's identity amnesia. We have forgotten who we are. Tripp is saying that believers who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ and adopted into the family of God have forgotten that they are children of God. Jesus said, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. True believers do not forget who they are. And in forgetting who we are, we frantically look for identity in thousands of places where it will never be found, places where you are never meant to look for identity. Your spiritual back has hurt you for so long, you've forgotten that you're in pain. According to Tripp, Christian believers don't know who they are and so are frantically searching for an identity. And we have Tripp's confession. I can make the confession. Half the time, I don't have a clue who I am. Yeah, I, I do know my name. I'm the Paul behind the mustache. <laughs> Talk about identity. My mustache now officially has its own Twitter site. <laughs> Pray for that person. They're in deep need of this thing called life. And here we see the real trip, having publicly declared that the Church of Jesus Christ is suffering with a serious disease. He jokes about his moustache and raises a laugh. It is not difficult to discern the trite nature of Tripp's message. You are always assigning to yourself some kind of identity. And, and the identity that you assign to yourself will somehow, some way, set the course for how you deal with literally everything in your life. You never escape the identity that you assign to yourself, ever. Tripp is completely given over to the psychological theory of identity. Without biblical justification, he makes the astounding assertion that the Church of Jesus Christ is infected with a sad disease called identity amnesia. Dr. Anthony Bradley, Professor of Religious Studies and Director of the Centre for the Study of Human Flourishing at the King's College, comments on identity theory. He writes, The phrase identity in Christ is so unbiblical and self-centred 
It originates from identity theory. It's definitionally individualistic. As a covenant theologian, I prefer union with Christ because it emphasizes a sacramental life of service. Bradley goes on, for many evangelical Christians, this identity theory Christianity confuses and muddles their discourse on race, gender and justice, and they don't even know it. And more, churches teaching this individualistic, self-reverential, post-1980s very American identity in Christ theology seem confused then that people have low views of the sacraments, reject church discipline and church membership, focus on the worship experience. Why do pastors teach identity when neither the Bible nor the Christian tradition uses self-centered categories? Scripture does not teach identity in Christ theology. The Church of Jesus Christ is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. True believers are obedient followers of Christ. We know who we are and do not need to be rescued from identity amnesia. Tripp addressed the Evangelical Movement of Wales in 2015 and again promoted his concept of identity amnesia. Well, there is a disease that infects the Church of Jesus Christ. It's a silent soul killer. It wreaks havoc on marriages. It renders parents either angry or defeated. It divides churches. It leaves people angry and afraid and discouraged and envious. It causes many to lose their way. You say, well, what is that disease? Well, here it is. It's the plague of identity amnesia. Trip, with his special wisdom and guided by his commitment to psychology, claims to have discovered an unknown disease that is infecting the church, a disease that has never been found before and is not mentioned in Scripture. It is so easy for us to forget who we are as the children of God. And what's important about that is that to the degree that you forget who you are as a child of God, Trip is completely wrong. True believers do not forget who they are. Every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, we eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance of our risen Lord and Savior. To that degree, here what I'm about to say, you begin to shop horizontally for what you've already been given vertically. You begin to look for identity where it cannot be found. Trip is asserting that identity amnesiacs, Christians who have forgotten that they are children of God, search for identity in earthly pursuits. Praise God for your husband or wife, but they weren't meant to give you identity and meaning and purpose. It's not their job. Parents, your children weren't given to you to give you identity. Your job isn't meant to give you identity. Your possessions are not supposed to give you identity. 
We never stop acquiring because we're never satisfied. Because we think that that next thing will satisfy our hearts, will give us the identity that we seek. Tripp insists that Christians need an identity. And so they never stop searching for an identity that will satisfy their hearts. But scripture does not speak of a Christian identity. This idea comes from secular psychology. And I'm afraid that there are many in the church who have forgotten who they are. They're functional, street-level, identity amnesiacs. They've forgotten who they are, and they're desperately looking horizontally for what has already been given them vertically. How sad is that? Paul Tripp's teaching on identity is not based on Scripture. Scripture teaches that authentic Christian believers who have repented of sin and placed their faith in Jesus Christ have been adopted into the family of God, our Heavenly Father. We do not need the psychological category of identity to tell us who we are, for we know whom we have believed and are persuaded that he is able to keep what we have committed to him until that day. Yet Tripp, following the psychological model of Eric Erickson, and without any biblical warrant, promotes the view that Christians need to search for their identity. Acting as a modern day Gnostic with special knowledge, Tripp claims to have discovered a plague, identity amnesia, that has infected the Church of Jesus Christ. Like a communicable disease, this plague is ravaging the Church. It is so widespread that, to use his words, it gets us all. And most Christians don't even know that they have been infected. But Tripp is promoting a false narrative and a distorted view of the Christian faith. There is no such thing as identity amnesia. It is a figment of his imagination. The assertion that the Church of Jesus Christ is infected with a serious disease is not only nonsense, but a subtle attack on God's people. The fact that Tripp, having made his serious charge against the Church, takes time to make a joke about his moustache. My moustache now officially has its own Twitter site. <laughs> Demonstrates the trivial nature of his ministry. His assertion that many believers, having forgotten who they are, search for their identity in earthly things like family, possessions or career, is false. Tripp has created a false unbiblical view of the church and a false understanding of the Christian faith. He confesses to an identity crisis of his own. Half the time I don't have a clue who I am. Perhaps we should help him. He is a modern day Gnostic, a false teacher who is seeking to mislead Christians and destroy the church.